okay now folks i will now take you all on a journey of padma sambhava's life in india before he went to tibet now this is a video on padma sambhava's life in india before he went to tibet uh you will realize that lake ghankosha urgen or oriana and sahor or zahor they are all in one area in the same area so folks uh, what you call it the entire story is in a 20 km radius uh, and uh, what you call it tibetans have plunk padma sambhava all over india so actually the story is in bihar and he is prayed to in uh, four of, or five of his manifestations in lucky sarai district in bihar so folks check out the video okay now folks see all these places are in your guru padma sambhava story for the this is for tibetans see this is uren your oriana or urgen or urain that is pokhrama uh, in which means in the pond in the pond where uh, uh, they tried to burn uh, padma sambhava and he and uh, mandarva was seen sitting in a pond then there is dhanauri that is your lake dhankosha that is your lake dhankosha and then you have your zahor or sahor or this is sahur so you have sahur now this is the country of sahur the city this is the country of sahor so the king's palace was rampur the ancient name was ramvati and uh, next to his palace according to tibetan literature uh, the king made a palace for his daughter mandarva so this is manu is short form for mandarva so this is in the country of sahor that is rampur that is the king's uh, capital and his uh, palace and manu is mandarva's palace uh, next to the king's palace then in just next to sahur you have this hillock here with a beautiful cave in it uh, which is in bichwe bichwe is your uh, mount halesha the cave in mount halesha that is halesha it seems to be a what do you call it a tibetan mispronunciation of bichwe and then you have bal guddar Bal Gudar is uh, the place where the Indian, the Hindu uh, king tried to uh, drown the uh, Padma Sambhava in the Ganges. So basically, uh, 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 Padma Sambhava, as a child, he flew out of the water like a vulture, like a garur. So the Bal Gudar, Bal means child. Gudar is Garur, the the child that flew out of the water like a uh, Garur or like a vulture. So you have all the sites, and then you have Shingri Rishi. Shingri Rishi he uh, taught Padma Sambhava teachings of uh, Zong Pa Chen Po. Now I hope I got my the pronunciation correct. So folks, you have all these spots. within a uh, span of 20 km now let us uh, concentrate on the three main ones that is uren your oriana or urgen uh, in the what do you call it padma sambhava him i it is pronounced urgen so that is a, a tibetan mispronunciation of uren then you have dhanauri which is lake dhankosha and then you have Sa the country of sahor or zahor so folks let's see what wikipedia has to say about these three places this is wikipedia that is oriana let's see the name in the name section oriana is uh, is sanskrit in sanskrit is referred to by various names 
बिसाइड्स ओडियाना वी आल्सो फाइंड मेंशंस ओ ओडियाना 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 एक्सेट्रा ओरोगियर टू टिबेटन्स दिस इज इंपोर्टेंट टू टिबेटन्स इट इज नोन एज ओरगियन और ओरगियन और ओडियाना और ओयन और ओयन See folks, these the Tibetans are more accurate. O N is very similar to U R E N, and U R G E N is a direct Tibetan mispronunciation of U R E N. U R G E N, U R G E N, U R G E N. These are all direct mispronunciations of U R E N uh, by Tibetans. Now this is Oriana in Wikipedia. Now in Wikipedia, the seven-line prayer uh, is very important. Uh, Orgyan or Orgye. See, in the seven-line prayer of Padma Sambhava revealed in Jigmi Lingpa's Terma of Nongpo, etc., etc., all thing and throughout the. Loche Nin uh, something. Oriana is rendered in the form of Orgyan. So in the Padma Sambhava prayer, in the seven line prayer of Padma Sambhava, Oriana is rendered in the form of Orgyan. So basically, that is Tibetan mispronunciation of Uren, folks. I th- hope I am clear. Now, Gendun Ch- Chopal uh, states that in uh, Ur- Urgen or Uren, he saw a footmark of the Buddha. Well, folks, I also saw the footmark of the Buddha, but I did not videograph it because this area is dicey. It is quite lawless. Anyway, I d- went and di- uh, videographed the village. So check out the video, folks. That's your Urgen or Uriana or whatever you may call it. In uh, Uren, uh, as you know, the Tibetans uh, they mispronounce it as Oriana. Some call it Urgen. Some call it Uren. Some mispronounce it as some other Urgan. Uh, <coughs> so, folks, this is Uren, and you can see the entire thing. See, it's all on a huge stupa. Uh, the road goes up. It's all on a huge mud mound, and you can see this area too. We have climbed up from there. See, this is the top of a stupa. This is the high point of a stupa. Oh. Padma Sambhava's uh, uh, country, and you can see all these are recycled. These stones have been taken and recycled and made. These bricks are also recycled. See, these bricks are all ancient bricks. They have been recycled. And the yes, the archaeological survey of India. All these are uh, the entire city. It is a uh, sort of a Pompey. Pompey was under the ground. Similarly, Uren, the entire city of Uren, which the Tibetans are searching for, which was the country of Padma Sambhava, where the Padma Sambhava story, Guru Rinpoche story started. So this is a. And see how high that uh, uh, the mud mound goes, and there are bricks everywhere below uh, these uh, this um, uh, structure. We are still in Uren. You can see the uh, see it goes higher and higher. See, I have come here. Uh, the my car has been just climbing up and up and up. See. It's all on mud mounds. Everything is on mud mounds. See, the road goes right down. So we are going higher onto a mud mound. 
See, this is for Tibetans. We are, I am in your Uren, Urgen or Uren or Oriana, whatever you may call it. Uh, see, this is the central part of the village. This is the central part and we are on a huge mud mound. See, every, it go, the road goes down there and the road comes, goes up there. The road goes up there. So folks, uh, uh, there was a lot of excavation and this whole village is on top of an entire city. So that is your Uren or Oriana folks. Uh, the Tibetans can come here and check it up. You have now seen Uren, mispronounced by Tibetans as Urgen or Ur 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 Urgan. Uh, just uh, west of it, uh, slightly northwest of it, actually the name is up here but the village is down here. Northwest of it is Lake Dhanukosha. The name is here, the village is up here. Uh, the, uh, the lake is here. Uh, lake Dhanukosha. So let's see what Rigpa Wiki has to say about Dhanukosha. Now this, now this is Rigpa Wiki of Padma Sambhava. Let's see his birth. The birth, okay. The birth, what does it state? In the northwestern part of the land of Oriana. In the northwestern part of the land of Urgen or Uren. On an island in the lake of Dhanukosha, the blessings of the uh, uh, Buddhas took uh, shape in the form of a multicolored lotus flower. So folks, it is northwestern part of Uren. Now let's check out the satellite picture. Now that uh, see, Uren is the, the, it is written here. The village is here, and uh, Dhanukosh Lake is here. So you just read it was on the northwestern part of uh, Oriana or Urgen or Uren. So folks, that is it. Uh, Dhanauri is your lake, Dhanukosha. Uh, let's see, have a close-up of the lake. See, it has... See, here it is written Dhanari, but the lake is here, folks. This is the lake and this is the island in the lake. This is the lake and this is the island in the lake. So this is your lake, Dhanukosha, which is now called Dhanauri. And I will tell you why it isn't called Dhanukosha and why it is called Dhanauri. Now next to Lake Dhanukosha, Lake Dhanukosha, that is Dhanari, is the country of Zahor. That is Sahur up here, folks. Next to Dhanauri or Lake Dhankosha is the country of Zahor that is Sahur up here. Now let's see what Wikipedia has to say about it. This is Wikipedia. Wikipedia says that Zahor was the birthplace of Shanta, Rakshita, Atisha and Tilopa. Now let's see in the name section. In the name section this is very interesting. Gendun Chopel suggests that Zahor may have been a, de a deviation of Sahora. Thus he suggests that the ancient city or kingdom in Sanskrit was known as Sahora. That is my Sahur folks, that is my Sahur, your Sahora is my Sahur. Now let's see the location section of Zahor. Zahor in Himachal Pradesh. Now see. In Pema Kathang and other life stories give a more fluid picture of places and their location. Thus, Zahor and Uriana are presented as either the same place or closely neighboring regions. They are closely neighboring regions, folks. Remember that. It states on the northwest frontiers of the land of Uriana in the center of the capital of Zahor. On the northwest frontier of the land of Oriana in the center of the capital of Zahor. Now this is very interesting. This is exactly what I have showed you in the satellite picture. 
See, this is the country of Uden. This is the country of Uden or Urgen or Oriana, and this is the country of Sahor. And uh, uh, the capital is on the northwest. See, this is Uden, and northwest of it is the capital that is uh, Rampur, which was previously called Ramvati, and that is Mano, that is Mandarva's palace. So this was the capital of. The country of Sahor or Zahor or my Sahur. Now I'm still on this hillock next to the cave. Uh, what do you call it? See that village over there, Rampur Khetra. That village over there, that is Rampur. That is the ancient Ramavat, where uh, what do you call it? The king of Sahor had made a palace. So this is Sahur, Sahor, and that is Ramavat. That is where uh, the king of Sahor made a palace. And just next to that is uh, what do you call it? Mano village. Mandarva. The short form of Mandarva is Mano. The short form of Mandarva is Mano. So that is Mano village. That is the palace the king of Sahor made for Mandarva. village that is uh, what you Tibetans were searching for Sahor or Zahor it is well, we say it call it Sahur so basically it is the Tibetan mispronunciation of Sahur Sahor and west of this east of this is what you call it Lake Dhanakosha that is Dhanauri of today least Kilometers to the east of that is Uren, which the Tibetans sometimes call Urgen, some Tibetan scholars call Urgen, some scholars call it Oriana, and but today it is Uren. And according to the Padma Katha, what do you call it? Uh, Oriana was uh, east of uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, what do you call it? Dhankosh Lake. And uh, uh, what, uh, this uh, Sahor was east, uh, uh, west of uh, what do you call it? Uh, Dhankosh Lake. And Oriana of Urgen was and Sahor were close to each other. So these three villages fits in that. Plus, They pray to a Dakini, a Dakini who, is, who was the da daughter of Sahor, Sahur. So basically, they don't know that she was the daughter of the uh, king of Sahur because that village is now a very poor village. So basically, when I compared this with the Tibetan text, I realized all the places were here. Okay, folks. Uh, your name? My name is Suresh Prasad Singh. Hai. Uh, Suresh, he is Suresh Prasad Singh of Sahur village. He is an elder of this village. And you can see the other people. Uh, in Krasa, can you see yeah. You can see uh, the other people. They are all sitting uh, on top of this well. And uh, they are wondering why I have come here. Uh, and basically, I'm telling them the story of Padma Sambhava, Guru Rinpoche, and Mandarva. So here he is. Ki naam hole? Suresh Prasad. Mr. Suresh Prasad Singh, he has uh, something to say to the people of Tibet and Bhutan. Kya bolna hai? Boliye. Aap aaye yahan. Ye Sahur gaon hai. Aur aap yahan aaye. Aapka swagat ham log karne ke liye tayar. Now, for those who don't understand, he has invited you, and he they are they will be very glad that you all come and see their village, because uh, basically you all have meant the people of Bhutan and Tibet have maintained the history of this village. Thank you. Parnam. So this is Sahur. 
this is uh, where I just videographed Sahur, where that old gentleman invited Tibetans. Now, proof of Sahur is that uh, the daughter of the king of Sahur was a Dakini, so there should be a Dakini temple. This is Singarpur, just next to this hillock up here. This is Bichwe hillock. And this is Singarpur, which is one of Padma Sambhava's manifestations, the lion's roar, Singka Chigar Singarpur, the lion's roar. And up here there is a Dakini temple. See, uh, proof of Sahur is there should be a Dakini temple in the visit vicinity because Mandarva was a Dakini. So folks, here is the Dakini temple. It is Mama Ji Mandir. Mama is grandma, grandmother. So basically, Mandarva was the daughter of the king of Sahur. So she was the grandmother. These people are her descendants. These people are her descendants. So Mama Ji means grandmother. So and this is a Dakini temple. So the Dakini temple of Mama Ji is proof that Sahur is the Zahor or Sahor the Tibetans are looking for. Because Zahor or Sahor should have a Dakini temple. So Mandarva should be prayed to folks. And this is the temple. Check it out. Okay folks, so what is your name? Bridge Mahrotra. Mr. Bridge Mahrotra, he is uh, from UP, but his mother is Tibetan and his wife is Tibetan. Uh, yes. Now I have brought them to Singarpur. Singarpur is Sing Ka Chighar. Sing Ka Chighar means the lion's roar. So this is one of the names of Padma Sambhava. We are just below the hillock. Now folks, uh, this is, uh, what do you call it? Rani Mandarvas. Dakini. I hope Kinkar uh, uh, the Mandir hai. But but I Kinkar sir video loan. Kinkar Mandir hai. Mama ji. Mama ji. Mama ji. Ki halkin Mama ji. Ramjoti. Dakini halkin. Ha ha. So she. This is Dak. We call her Dakini Mama. She was the daughter of Sahur. And the Tibetans say the Rani Mandarva was the daughter of Sahur. Abu. And going in, sir. Please. Uh, now, this is the actual form of uh, Buddhism, folks. See, the law, uh, the, the Buddha did not allow. Statue worship or photo worship. So you have kaha wo dakri mama kene hati no? Yehi hai. So this is you. This is what they pray to. Understand the havan. Actually, see, it is all burnt stuff here. You must remember they tried to burn Rani Mandarva, uh, and uh, water came and doused the flames. That is in Jalapasthan. So because they try to burn Rani Mandarva, all the temples up here that pray to Dakini Mama have got a connection with fire, burning fire. Ram Jyoti Mama. Ah. So folks, uh, this is officially this temple. It may look, uh, it is a small village now. Uh, it may look sm <coughs> small. But this is the official temple of Rani Mandarva, first consort of Padma Sambhava, which the locals up here call Govind Baba and Jagraj Baba. So, folks, uh, uh, this is it. And this uh, this uh, prayer up here, up here on this spot, this fire has been blowing for centuries. Thank you. <clears throat> now that you have seen Purain, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 Yun Sang Rai, no, what do you call it, the Tibetans say, Northwest is the Dhankosha Lake. See, this is the Northwest is the Dhankosha Lake. Now, why isn't it called Dhankosha? Why is it called Dhanauri? 
Why is this called Dhanauri? Let's look up Wikipedia. This is again Padma Sambhava Rikwa Wiki. Now let's see the birth section, folks. In the northwestern part of the land of Oriana on the island in the lake of Dhankosha, the blessings of the Buddhas took shape in the form of a multicolored lotus flower moved by compassion in the suffering of sentient beings. The Buddha Amitabha sent out from his heart a golden vajra marked with the syllable H R I H, which descended onto the lotus blossom. Now, this uh, marked with the syllable H R I H. This is re. If you pronounce it H R I H, is pro pronounced as re. So, in Lake Dhanakosha, in Lake Dhanakosha, remove the ko kosha and add H R I H. It becomes Dhanari. See, remove the K O S H A and add the H R I H. It becomes Dhana Ri. So, folks, now you will understand why it, the lake isn't called Dhan, Dhan Kosha, it is called Dhanari. So, now you understand, folks, why this is, isn't called Dhan Kosha, it is called Dhanari. This is Ri, is that is sounding of H R I H, the last four syllables. Uh, given by Amitabha uh, uh, through a Vajra. So folks, check out the video of the lake. Now we go back to the birth section. We see part of the land of Oriana on an island in the lake. See, now there is supposed to be an island in the lake of Dhanukosha. There is supposed to be an island in the lake of... See, he mentions the island twice. Now see in the birth section. In the marriage and exile section, here he says, returning to the island in Lake Dhankosha. See, in the marriage and exile section, returning to the island in Lake Dhankosha. So, Lake Dhankosha has to have an island, folks. Understand? So, check out the island. Now, this is a satellite picture of the lake. See, this is the railway line here. The lake goes from the railway line, all this, it's around 13, 17 acres. The lake is around 17 acres. It is uh, 1,000 uh, feet long and 600 feet broad. And see the island is clearly in the middle here. The island is clearly in the middle here. So this is authentic, your rebel sir and all don't have an island. And this uh, uh, lake fits in to Padma Sambhava story accurately. Check out the video. Okay, now folks, uh, Mr. Bridge Mahrotra. Mr. Bridge Mahrotra, uh, he is uh, a Buddhist and he is a follower of Padma Sambhava. And uh, I have brought him to your lake Dhanakosha. Dhanakosha. Now, uh, uh, folks, that is the island in the middle of Lake Dhanosha, Dhankosha in front of uh, in front of you. In the town ah. is Dhan now, why is it called uh, Dhanari and not Dhankosha? Because when uh, the Buddha Amitabha <coughs> he saw uh, the problems humans were facing, the four letters came out of his mouth: H R I H, H R I H. And it fell like a Vajra on that island. H R I S fell like a Vajra on that island. So if you remove Kosha from Dhanakosha and add H R I H, it becomes Dhanari. It becomes Dhanari, folks. This is Dhanari, and that is the island to which your Padma Sambhava would always return. Ah, Ah. You see, uh, people have mud filled so that there is a road to that island and there is a bridge over there. Pulwa de Kayon. Folks, there is a bridge over there uh, and uh, what do you call it? They have mud filled the road to the island. Thank you. Onkar Rock. Uh, my, myself and Mr. Maharotra, we are going towards the island. See, the villagers have made a bridge up here. 
they have mud fields in this part. So we are, we have entered the lake. You can see the lake up here. The lake up here, and we are approaching the island. There is a little bridge up here. Go down on that side. Ah, uh, bridge up here, and see this is the part of the lake. Uh. Folks, we have entered the island. Mr. Marotra is the, officially the first Buddhist to have entered this island, uh, uh, the birthplace of Padma Sambhava. Mr. Mahirotra has gone there and he is chanting the Padma Sambhava prayer. So folks, after 1100 years, a uh, Buddhist with Tibetan Nyingma lineage has come here and is chanting Padma Sambhava's prayer. Buddham Sharanam Gachami, Dhammam Sharanam Gachami. That's all that I know folks. He is ch chanting the prayer. Go here. Mr. Mahrotra is conducting prayers. Mr. Mahrotra is conducting prayers on the island on Lake Dhankosha. Mr. Malhotra has finished conducting his press. Folks, after 1100 years, someone has prayed here. After 1100 years, a Nyingma Buddhist has come all the way. Kagyu. Uh, Kagyu, he's, a, he's from the Kagyu sect. He has come all the way and prayed on the island in the middle of Lake Dhankosha, folks. Here is your Lake Dhankosha for you. We are on the island and you just heard the prayer. After his birth in Dhanadi, the king of Puren went for a, on a voyage to the uh, lake and he saw this eight-year-old child uh, preaching the scriptures. So he was surprised at his knowledge and he adopted him and brought him here. Naturally, the people of Uren or Urgen uh, or Oriana, they did not uh, appreciate it. And uh, while Padma Sambhava was playing uh, uh, a game, he threw his trishul and uh, by mistake murdered a minister's child, for which his father had to uh, banish him to uh, Sheetal Van. Sheetal Van, which was the uh, most uh, scary charnel ground of that era. See up here, this is Kajara. Sheetal, it's not called Sheetal Van, it is called Sheetalas Khan. Up here, Sheetalas Khan and it is still, uh, what do you call it, channel ground. Not uh, today. The elders they go to uh, what do you call it uh, for to burn dead bodies in the Ganges. But up here they cremate children. So this is uh, Shitala Sthan is up here. Uh, it is a small, uh, a forgotten place. It's a channel ground. No one visits, visits it. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, people avoid it. So that's why they haven't given the name. Anyway, uh, the uh, channel ground. 
and then after this uh, 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 what do you call it uh, uh, king was uh, destroying statues uh, uh, destroying statues so uh, w that is a the king the king was destroying statues now let's see what padma sambhava does to that king who was destroying statues after defeating various anti buddhist rulers guru rinpoche was poisoned but remained unharmed and he was thrown in the ganges but made the river flow upstream now you must remember this he was thrown in the ganges but made the river flow upstream and danced in the air therefore earning the name of khu khanding sal mighty youth soaring in the sky like a garud mighty he was called mighty youth soaring in the sky like a garud so he sort of became a uh what do you call it uh, vulture and he flew into the air see this king did not know that uh, padma sambhava had done siddhi in eight channel grounds and he had powers so he tried to drown him in the ganges but padma sambhava was thrown in the ganges but made the river flow upstream this is very important because i am going to show you the place where it flowed upstream and danced in the air and therefore earning the name of khu khalding sal uh, mighty youth soaring in the sky like a garud so that is bal guddar village bal means uh, youth and guddar is garuda bal means youth and guddar is garuda so check out the satellite picture this was in bal guddar now bal guddar the uh, a king a hindu king was uh, breaking statues buddhist statues and uh, padma sambhava as a child went to stop him so uh, the, what that king did was he uh, what he could dry, try to drown him in the ganges but uh, padma sambhava flew out of the river uh, like a vulture child like a vulture he flew out like a child like a vulture so that is exactly what bal guddar means bal guddar means child vulture so bal means child and guddar is vulture so this is the stupa and uh, what do you call it the uh, 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 tibetan uh, folklore says that padma sambhava caused the river to flow uh, the ganges to flow north see up here is the har har river it has right in front of the stupa it has swung and uh, gone up northwest that is the har har river and the ganges you see it has see the old river bed the ancient river bed of the ganges it has swung around here and gone north this is the unique thing about this story see i will do a close up i will do a close up and uh, here it is uh see it's up here and this is it see it has swung up it has swung up ah this is the old ganges you see the old ganges see it is moving up it is moving up can you see it this is the unique thing about this story so you have two rivers up here one is the har har river swinging up and you have the old ganges swimming up and uh, you have the ancient here the ri ancient river bed see here 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 it has turned and moved up where it is written summoned you see it has turned and moved up so this is the ancient uh, river bed and uh, uh, the village name is bal guddar uh, which is bal garud folks ch uh, check out the video in fact alexander cunningham also i read his report out that uh, cunningham does a survey of bal guddar and see what he found this is a, uh, he found a statue uh, figure 
Uh, he numbers it as B2. Now I have to search for this figure. It is very important. B2 has a human headed bird in a semicircle. A human headed bird in a semicircle. Alexander Cunningham hadn't read the Tibetan scriptures or he would have known it, or it was Padma Sambhava who flew out uh, as a child, who was a child who flew out of the Ganges like a vulture. So B2 has a human headed bird in a semicircle and beneath this a group of Shiva and Parvati uh, seated on rocks. So basically it's Shiva and Parvati. It was a Hindu king who tried to uh, kill, uh, what do you call it, uh, Padma Sambhava and uh, drown him in the Ganges. And he flew out like a uh, vulture. So you, uh, the, uh, uh, Cunningham found a figure of a human-headed bird in a semicircle. Uh, and beneath this is a group of Shiva and Parvati seated on rocks uh, with the four-armed Bhairav standing in front. So folks, this it is very important to uh, search for this figure. I think it is in Calcutta Museum. Okay, now folks, now I am in Balguddar. Your Guru Rinpoche story, Padma Sambhava story. This is Balguddar, Bal Garur. This is one of uh, Rim, Guru Rinpoche's manifestations. Come, on. Come, see the bricks over here, folks. This. There is a monastery inside this. There is a monastery inside this. Abo. See, the bricks up here. There is a monastery inside this. Now that is the village of Bal Gudar. Abo, abo. You see the highway over there. Highway over there. East of that highway was the Ganges. Was the Ganges. Now, according to the Guru Rinpoche Padma Sambhava story, uh, a king was breaking Buddhist uh, statues, etc. And uh, Padma Sambhava, as a child, went to stop him. So that king, when he went and told the king not to break the statues, the king uh, tried to drown him in the Ganges. That is the Ganges, folks, where the village is just now. That is the ancient Ganges, where the village is. So basically, when they tried to drown him, they tried to drown him. Uh, Padma Sambhava had done Siddhi in seven. Uh, charnel grounds in seven ch charnel grounds. So, like a uh, vulture, he flew out of the water. Like a vulture, he flew out of the water and he started laughing in the sky. Everyone r ran away. Folks, this is the spot. This is the spot. This is Bal Guddar, Bal Garur. Bal Garur is one of his manifestations. The child, like a vulture. The child like a vulture. So this is Bal Garur. We are on top of the monastery. Excavations are going to take place here. And uh, folks, uh, this is a part of the Padma Sambhava story. That is the place where the Hindu king tried to drown uh, the child Padma Sambhava. After this episode of uh, fighting the Hindu king, uh, uh, Padma Sambhava went to various uh, Sangh Dharmas to, uh, for further studies. And uh, one of them was Gadwa, folks. One of them was Gadwa, which the historians are searching for Gauda. As the historians are searching for Sahor and Oriana and Dhanakosh. They are searching for Gauda. Actually, this is Gadwa. 
basically the people of Sahor migrated from Gadwa and uh, uh, what do you call it uh, they say uh, uh, what Parma Sambhava up here is known as Govind Baba and Mandarva is known as Mama Mai so the people of uh, Rampur uh, and Mano Mano is Mandarva they say that uh, uh, Govind Baba and Mama Mai came from Gadwa that and uh, Hyun Sang had come here and Hyun Sang had said that there was a Sangrama here for 50 bhikshus and bhikshunis uh, where uh, the Buddha had preached for seven days for the sake of Brahma Devas from the, for the sake of Brahma Devas and in this area Padma Sambhava and uh, what do you call it uh, Mandarva are known as Brahma Devti and Brahma Devta so Brahm Deva and Brahm Devti are, um, uh, and the, according to Yun Sang, the Buddha preached up here for the sake of Brahm Devas. So Padma Sambhava must have got his education here, and this is where he met Mandarva, which is why people of Rampur say Mama Mai and uh, Govind Baba come from Gadua. So folks, check out the video. Okay, folks, now we are in uh, Rampur village. Uh, this is, see, the board is over there, Govind Baba Man, uh, Sthan. Uh, the temple is there. See, and we are on a stupa. The stupa goes up there, and the stupa goes up there. So this entire village is on top of a stupa, and these are Villages. I am a Bhardwaji and they all are Bhard. Aap log sab Bhardwaji hai. They all are Bhardwajis like me. And uh, we all pray to Govind Baba, to whom the Tibetans pray to as Padma Sambhava. Thank you. Now let's go back to the country of Sahor. The king of Sahor, that is the king's palace, is this Rampur up here. The king of Sahor made a palace just next to his palace for his daughter Mandarva. This is the short form of Mandarva Mano. So this is her palace. Uh, check out the video folks. Check out the video. Okay now folks, uh, I am in Mano. Mano, uh, uh, what do you call it? They say this is the old D. This is the oldest section of the this village Mano. Mandarva, short form of Mandarva Mano. Uh, you see in the Tibetan books, scriptures, the king of Sahor made a, a palace for his daughter Mandarva next to him. Uh, near his, so that is uh, the Rampur Gar, which is the king of Sahor's palace. And uh, this is uh, the oldest section of Mano village. See, you can see the mud mound goes down. And you have some bricks, thin bricks up here. The thin bricks up here. So basically, this is on top of, uh, I suspect this is on top of Mandarva's palace. Uh, this is, and uh, a gentleman up here, he says that uh, this area is spooky. He says this area is spooky and people can't build anything up here because or any construction fails. And uh, they, uh, they talk about ghostly appearances up here. I don't know how far that is true, but this is what this gentleman says. But this is the oldest section of this village, Mano. That is the short form of Mandarva, uh, a door, uh, Bihari. He will call his daughter Mandarva Manua or Mano. So uh, this is that section and this is the section where uh, the people of uh, the Sahur caste, the Sahur caste, the Bhardwaj Brahmans, they live here. So this is bigger confirmation that this is Mandarva's palace area. You see that, see the mound going up. All these are on Mandarva's palace area. Ah, okay. Still in this uh, 
what I suspect is Mandarva's palace area. See, this is a very ancient well, folks. This is a very ancient well. Ah, uh, niche lele. This is a very ancient well. Uh, this will be, I suspect, the well within her palace area. See, it is in on high land. You see, the uh, uh, road is going higher over there. Abo. See, the road is going higher and see this, this area is going higher. So this is the palace area, this is the central part of Mano village. This is your Pala King's post. So, the Pala King in which this Parmasambhava and uh, Mandarva story took place. You can see the height of this place. And this looks like a scuba. See, we are going higher. This is the highest point. This is the highest point. Thank you. Welcome to Mano Manua Mandarva's Palace. Thank you. But so you have Sahur there, which I showed you and Rampur, which is, was the capital of Sahur, uh, uh, which I have just showed you the video. Now next to the, uh, what do you call it, capital, the next to the uh, royal palace of the king of Sahur, the, he had made a, a palace for his daughter, uh, Mandarva. And one day the king went to visit her and he saw or heard some a male voice coming out from her uh, palace. So he bulldozed, he uh, crashed through the door and he entered uh, her quarters and he saw uh, Padma Sambhava and her chatting. So he decided this, uh, his daughter was going out of control, she was going to uh, disgrace the family so he arrested both of them and then took them to two hillocks up here. These two hillocks, uh, which the Tibetans call Zangdo Palri. Uh, this is Jainagar Pahari, which Tibetans call Zangdo Palri. See, here are the two uh, hillocks. Uh, I will uh, give a close-up. This is a close-up of the two hillocks. See, up here you have uh, Jain, uh, what do you call it, Lali Pahari, and this is Kali Pahari, the black hillock. See, the black hillock also features uh, in uh, Buddhist scriptures uh, where the black robed monk used to stay. And this is Lali Pahari or the uh, hillock which looks reddish. And uh, the Tibetans call it the copper colored mountain. The copper colored mountain. And this uh, village in between that is Jainagar, uh, Jainagar, which the Tibetans call Zangdo Palri. Now, Zangdo Palri is a direct mispronunciation of Jainagar Pahari. Jai Zang, Jai Zang, Jai Zang, this is Jai Nagar, Zang Do, Jai Nagar Do, Do means two, Palri is Pahari, so Jai Nagar Do, uh, uh, Zang Do, Palri is Jai Nagar Do, Pahari, this is the black mountain and this is the, uh, what do you call it, uh, copper colored mountain or the reddish mountain, see it is Lali Pahari, Lali means reddish and uh, on top up here there is a what do you call it uh, the, uh, a structure has been excavated which is exactly like the lotus light palace it is exactly like the lotus light palace and uh, what do you call it and Lali means the lotus light Lali means the lotus light because uh, lotus is pink, lotus is pink and there is no, what do you call it, uh, word for the pink color in Hindi. It is Lali, pink means like red. 
so uh, uh, the lotus light when do you get the lotus light the pink light that is the morning's lali lali pahadi is the lotus light palace folks and this is jayanagar pahadi zangdo palri and uh, what do you call it uh, this is uh, mandarwa was incarcerated i am sure uh, in the palace up here in the lotus light palace previously it was it belonged to the king of sahor and uh, after he tried to burn padma sambhava uh, what do you call it the uh, 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 the king was surprised when he came out uh, alive and uh, sitting on a lotus uh, flower so he gave him his entire property so this uh, what do you call it palace uh, went into padma uh, as padma sambhava's property this is your lotus light palace where uh, uh, rani mandarva was incarcerated and what do you call it padma sambhava was incarcerated up here on the black mountain uh, they were incarcerated just opposite each other uh, check out the videos okay folks just now I have just coming down from the copper colored mountain with Mr. Maharotra uh, with me and uh, see over that's Kali Pahari I have videographed this uh, hillock and this is Lali Pahari the copper colored mountain and that is Kali Pahari see the jagged rocks the Tibetans have shown it as clouds black clouds uh, dark grey clouds and that village in between is Zang, uh, Jainagar Pahari which Tibetans have mispronounced as Zangdok Palri that is uh, Jainagar so these two hillocks are Jainagar Pahari Zangdok Palri by Tibetans so Zangdok is a mispronunciation of Jainagar which is this village and Palri is a mispronunciation of Pahari which are these two both these hillocks the black one and the copper colored one, which we call Lali Pahari up here, folks. So that is your Zangdok Pali. And just across that hillock, the black hillock, is uh, Kavaya village, which is called the country of Kamara. That is Kavaya village called the country of Kamara, folks. So feast your eyes on the copper colored mountain up here. And... Uh, what do you call it? The Black Mountain there. Padma Sambhava was incarcerated on top there in a dungeon. And uh, what do you call it? Mandarva was incarcerated up here in a dungeon. And this is your Zangdok Palri or Jainagar Pahari. Thank you. Okay, now folks, this is a aerial view of the uh, what do you call it ruins that were recently ex excavated on the uh, Lali Pahari on your Zangdok Palri and this is a Thanka painting of the Lotus Light Palace on Zangdok Palri this is a Thanka painting of the Lotus Light Palace on uh, uh, Zangdok Palri and uh, this is the uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, ruins which have come out uh, in the excavations uh, on your Zangdok Palri or Jayanagar Pahari. Now, see the similarities between both the, pitch, uh, the pictures. Uh, you have this front square, the plinth of the building in the Thanga painting, you have this front square. And that square is seen up here. Okay? Now behind this square, there is another square. This one. See, behind the first square is another square. This one. See, the plinth is the same. Behind this square is the second square. And then you have the uh, whole, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, breadth of the uh, building. 
so basically uh, and then you now you have these uh, circular bastions on all four corners circular bastions these circular bastions are showed here in blue uh, they the thanka painter painter has tried to uh, show them as uh, circular see it is in blue and see the corners the corners the it's uh, uh, this way the what do you call it thing juts out it is the same thing up here when you see it from the ground the corners are ditto so you have the bastions up here and here and you have these squares you have these squares and there is a black rock up here that black rock is up here uh, when you go on the ruins you will see it and this, this it is three stories the thanka shows it as three stories on pillars they have found 21 pillars here so this is the central person see this section of the thanka area is this section in the uh, what do you call it ruins so this is a ditto exact uh, copy of the thanka painting or the thanka painting is an exact copy of this ruin on lali pahari or your zangdok palri which is our jayanagar pahari now why do we call it lali this is called the what do you call it uh, this is called the lotus light palace now what is the lotus light now what is lo the lotus light and what is lali this is lali this is the lotus light lotus light is lotus is pink color now when do you get the pink color light the lotus light the pink light that is the morning uh, light the sunrise the pinkish sunrise light that is lali so folks that is lali lali means the pinkish light in early morning so lal this is lali this is the lotus light they mean the same thing the lotus light is lali the lotus light is lali so this is the lotus light palace folks 100% we call it lali pahari that means this is lali mahal and folks see the what do you call it things are ditto the ground floor padma sambhava himself sat on top of him the first floor avlokiteshwar sat and on top of uh, the on the uh, upper upper floor uh, uh, buddha amitab sat so folks here that means your uh, padma sambhava sat here avlokiteshwar over there and uh, what do you call it uh, buddha amitab higher and you have 21 bases of pillars here and uh, these have all been broken so folks this is your no doubt this is your lotus light palace on zangdok palri thank you okay folks now this is the first viewing of the lotus light temple on the copper colored mountain see you can see the bastions and padma sambhava seat is on top there we are not allowed to photograph or videograph this place, so I, I won't be videographing the top. I've done it from the side. Thank you. So for, uh, this is uh, for my Tibetans. This is the Lotus Light Palace on Zangdok Palri, Jayanagar Pahari, Copper Colored Mountain. See, it is a massive structure, the bastions, and it is a sight for saw eyes. Folks, this is... Guru Padma Samhava's Lotus Light Palace. Okay, now folks, I am on the Lotus Light Palace. We call it Lali Pahari. We call it Lali Pahari. Lali means the Lotus Light. The Lotus is pink and you get the Lotus Light early in the morning. 
so that is we call that early light um, uh, lali and you can see the quality of the construction these all these are rooms and uh, tibetan scriptures are written in such a manner that you know who stayed in which room uh, in uh, on the lotus light palace and uh, you see the quality of the construction you can, you can the plaster is still alive the plaster is still alive and uh, uh, so this is the lotus light palace and see that uh, stupa in the distance uh, just across the river it is uh, padma sambhava's most probably padma sambhava's relic stupa because he must have left his body on earth and gone to heaven so that is most probably his relic stupa because the lotus light palace is facing uh, the uh, uh, stupa and uh, monks would sit here meditate looking at padma sambhava stupa and that side is uh, bichwe hillock just uh, across it is uh, your zahor and just across that is your lake dhankosha and urgen and on bichwe hillock uh, padma sambhava and uh, mandarva practiced three months of longviti now let's see where they incarcerated mandarva uh, uh, when she was uh, dragged here by the king i am on the western tip of the lotus light palace just above the dungeon the dungeon is below me and uh, uh, see this is the lotus light palace we call it lali the, the dungeon uh, what do you call it padma sambhava for previously this was the king of zahor's palace which later on he gave it to padma sambhava and uh, see it is a beautiful structure and uh, uh, you can see it is a grand structure and uh, the dungeon is uh, just here below me see the palak is the uh, the king of zahor was a palak king and see this is the uh, probably one uh, dungeon and the other one which is the most probable one is this one and uh, i remember going in there 20 years ago and uh, see there is a room on the side see up here and uh, with a door on the right hand side so that is the dungeon in which uh, mandarva was incarcerated by her father the king of zahor so folks this is uh, the lotus light palace uh we call it lali pahari the lotus light is pink color you get pink uh, the pink light early in the morning which is lali so this is the dungeon in which mandarva was incarcerated by her father now that you have seen the video of uh, the dungeon where mandarva was incarcerated check out the video of of the dungeon where uh, padma sambhava was incarcerated now we are go see going up kali pahari to search for the dungeon where padma sambhava was incarcerated see that is lali pahari there that is lali pahari there and we are climbing kali pathal upar pahadi in search for the spot where padma sambhava was incarcerated okay boy, folks now i am on top of kali pahadi up here and i am searching for the spot where Indradam Neshwar, uh, uh, what do you call it, Padma Sambhava was incarcerated by the king of Sahor. See, Sahor is over there. Sahor is over there, Sahur. So the king of uh, 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 what do you call it, Sahur incarcerated Padma Sambhava. Uh, the local folklore is there was a dungeon here. See, it has been filled up by rubble. it has been filled up by rubble 
the dungeon so the folklore is there was a dungeon here and what do you call it um, uh, padma sambhava uh, not padma sambhava uh, a very strong uh, important person uh, who was uh, who had got entangled with the king of sahor's daughter which i think is the padma sambhava and mandarva story so he was incarcerated here and the people say because of this uh, what do you call it the curse for what do you call it uh, uh, incarcerating such a important person uh, the islamic invasion took place after that so basically after 200 years or 150 years after padma sambhava left uh, bihar uh, bakhtiyar khilji invaded so folks this is most probably your place where padma sambhava or mandarva who incarcerated you can see it has been filled up with rubble it has been filled up with small rocks so uh, folks that is that thank you i have had to risk uh climbing this rock side uh, and it's dangerous anyway thank you now that i've shown you the spot where padma sambhava would have been incarcerated by the king of sahor and that is lali pahadi that had uh, the excavations are going on i i videographed the spot where mandarva would most probably have been incarcerated by her father uh, that is the spot where she refused to leave the dungeon so that is lali pahadi folks now that you have seen both the hillocks uh, which is your zangdo palri uh, the uh, copper colored mountain and the black mountain so uh, mandarva was incarcerated here uh on on the lotus light in the lotus light palace she refused to uh stop interacting with padma sambhava who was incarcerated here uh, uh, and she refused to come out of the dungeon too so her father the king was uh, very angry he decided to kill uh, padma sambhava he dragged padma sambhava out and he took him to a place where he tried to uh, what do you call it uh, uh, burn him this is sansar pokhar sansar pokhar this lake is sansar pokhar see here is your lali pahadi or your uh, lotus light palace lali is the lotus light and this is sansar pokhar from where uh, a, a lake was formed and uh, padma sambhava got uh, uh, freed from samsara and uh, basically uh, they saw padma sambhava sitting on a lotus it is here uh, i will do a close up see here this is a uh, this is sansar pokhar and this is a see stupa and this is a you can see the stupa in the middle up here the stupa is in the middle here and there is a moat around it there is a moat around it uh, according to tibetan legend this uh, moat was filled with uh, uh, till oil this moat was filled with sesame oil and uh, what do you call it this oil overflowed and created this lake uh, which freed uh, padma sambhava from samsara so basically i uh, and the unique thing about this lake is all the holy things even to see there are quite a few lakes up here there are quite a few lakes but uh, all the holy uh, activities all the prayers are done on the bank uh, on in this lake 
in fact uh, they uh, what do you call it uh, put all the uh, uh, dispose all the uh, statues of gods and goddesses in this lake sansar poker so uh, now i realize that uh, it got how it got its name it got its name from the tibetan uh, from tibetan mythology so uh, it means in the ancient times uh, this place was teeming with tibetans and here is the stupa in on which the lotus uh, padmasambhava and mandarva were seen sitting on a lotus and uh, with uh, a moat around uh, filled with sesame oil and this oil overflowed and created this lake now this area is called kyul kyul and uh, there is a tibetan word for this kyul kyuk kyu khalding sal so kyu is kyul uh, sal is sansar pokhar and khalding is another pond here so basically uh, uh, three these uh, three khalding is uh, ashtaghati pond so uh, these are all the uh, uh, mispronunciation q khalding sal is a mispronunciation of the these three ponds names so folks check out the videos Let's see what Rigpa Wiki has to say about this episode. The uh, Tibetans seem a bit, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, confused. With Mandarva, he then returned to Oriana, but was re uh, recognized and burned on a sandwood, sandalwood pyre. After some time, they were found seated on a lotus in a lake of sesame oil. wearing a garland of skulls as a symbol of their liberating all beings from samsara through compassion so samsara was that sansar pokhar which i showed you in the satellite picture and seated on a lotus in a lake uh, surrounded by sesame oil was that uh, what do you call it uh, 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 that stupa i showed you uh that was that had a moat around it were seated on a lotus in a lake of sesame oil that is the moat of i showed you and samsara is that samsar pokhar which uh, i showed you check out the videos okay folks now i am in uh, kyul basti and i am in kyul basti This is a very important place for Tibetans because after uh, after what do you call it uh, 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 incarcerating uh, uh, Mandarva and Padma Sambhava on Kali Pahari and Lal Pahari, Lali Pahari, uh, when Mandarva refused to. not talk to padma sambhava they were dragged down and burnt alive they were dragged down and burnt alive padma sambhava was uh, burnt al uh, they attempted to burn padma sambhava alive what happened was <clears throat> the fire was uh, extinguished and he was seen sitting on a lotus uh flower uh, uh with uh, with a ring of uh, with a moat of uh, what do you call it uh, sesame oil around him folks wahan dekha uh see that is the stupa is just now filled with greenery and this hamar piche se aao ji e that is the stupa and it's filled with uh, greenery and you can see the moat around it ekra ekra ji aao nazdik pani dikhai do you can see the moat around it this was filled with sesame oil now according to tibetan mythology the sesame oil overflowed and created that uh, lake called sansar pokhar where the uh, padmasambhava was freed 
from samsara that's why it got its name samsar poker we sure. used to always wonder why that uh, lake was called samsar poker we didn't know that it had a deep tibetan connection so folks there it is the stupa on which padma sambhava was seen on a lotus flower the locals they say that stupa belonged to a king and queen that stupa belonged to a king and queen and uh, now we know that padma sambhava was a king he was the king of urge pure and uh, 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 mandarma was the queen of uh, what do you call it zahor sahor sahur so my asahur so basically this is where uh, that miracle took place where the uh, they tried to burn padma sambhava and the fire went off there is a stupa you can see the greenery over there the stupa is covered with the greenery and this moat is around it and this moat was filled with sesame oil which overflew and flowed and created a sansar pokhar that lake that side above <coughs> that lake that side and what do you call it now from this spot this is the spot where the king of zahor he capitulated before padma sambhava gave him his country gave him his clothes gave him his everything and they he allowed uh, mandarva and padma sambhava to live together now uh, the next place i will show you is a uh, uh, sansar pokhar from where uh, pa pa padma sambhava was released from samsara and uh, after that there is a place called jora mandir there is a, a temple called jora mandir jora means uh, couple so that uh, and uh, uh, you will find padma sambhava statues in that temple so uh, basically from here they went and they were allowed to live together that is in jora temple the couple temple so folks you have it all here ah that is the stupa on which padma sambhava was seen sitting on a lotus flower the locals say it belonged to a king and queen and there is a, a folklore that uh, what do you call it uh, the queen would come and sit on a lotus flower so folks uh, this is the place thank you Okay. Okay. Now I am in Sansar Poker. Uh, I just showed you the stupa over there in Kuhl, where uh, Padma Sam they tried to burn Padma Sam Bhava, and he uh, uh, the fire was extinguished, and uh, sesame oil that moat filled of with sesame oil it overflowed, and it created a lake. which freed padma sambhava from samsara yeah. folks this is the uh, this samsar pokhar uh, just now it's uh, filled with this water hyacinth and thing you can see it's a huge uh, lake samsar pokhar and uh, in another day uh, when they clean up the uh, lake i will show you now how it looks uh, when the water is clean uh, i'll be bringing mr mehrotra here to see the lake so this is the place folks sansar pokhar we used to always wonder why it was called samsar pokhar and uh, the tibetan texts uh, have given the answer this is where padma sambhava was freed from samsara and uh, what do you call it and this is why it got its name sansar pokhar there is only a difference between pronunciation we call it samsar pokhar and the tibetans call it samsara so folks uh you know uh, in another day i will uh, 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 be bringing uh, mr mehrotra uh, and i hope it's uh, clean by then okay thank you bas this is a video i took of sansar pokhar 3 years ago 
and uh, this is mr mehrotra he, uh, he is a buddhist uh, he is the first buddhist to come here and uh, photograph this uh, lake uh, it is the same uh, lake which i just showed you just now um, uh, that was uh, filled with uh, water hyacinth see the within 2 years look at the difference this lake this is how, how the uh, sansar poker looked 2 years ago and you saw uh, the video in which uh, you it is filled with water hyacinth so this is just below lali pahadi and uh, what do you call it this is uh, where uh, padma sambhava the sesame oil overflowed and created this name and padma sambhava was freed from samsara so this is sansar pokhar where uh, padma sambhava was released from samsara where the miracle took place and he was released from samsara and uh, the king of sahor was surprised and he gave him his entire property his kingdom and his clothes and he allowed padma sambhava and mandarva to live together so uh, see here this is jora mandir uh, the jora means couple mandir so this is where they were allowed to live as a couple together it is just next to uh your lotus like palace that uh, lali pahadi and the black uh, mountain where padma sambhava was incarcerated jora mandir that is the uh, couples uh, uh, temple so this is where they were allowed to live as a couple and i found two engravings of padma sambhava two of his manifestations one was ningma ozar and the other was of the uh, padma sambhava as the bright light uh, uh, so basically and then the king of sahor requested padma sambhava to come to his palace in sahor so half naked he dragged padma sambhava according to tibetan uh, mythology he dragged padma sambhava on an horse cart and he pulled the horse cart himself so padma sambhava was sitting on the horse cart and he pulled the horse cart himself all the way to the country of sahor folks all the way to the country of sahor up here sahur or your sahor uh, or whatever it is actually sahur and the palace is in rampur the palace of the king of sahor was in rampur uh where uh, padma sambhava's old uh, the first uh, his officially his first temple was opened and people started praying to him this is just next to mano which is mandarva's palace and uh, this is the govind baba temple govind is gol bind gol means curved circular that is the rainbow body the rainbow is curved or circular circular so gol bind govind baba temple so folks the temple is here it is officially padma sambhava's first temple check out the video okay now folks we have just entered uh, pa uh padma sambhava's officially first uh, uh temple it would may have been a monastery previously below the ground you see it's on high ground it's on a stupa and uh, see this is a uh, of now they have made it into a swanky temple over there but uh, this is officially uh, padma sambhava's first temple according to your books uh, what uh, uh in the padma kathang uh the king of sahor uh started praying to padma sambhava and the people of sahor so this is the on top of the palace area folks and uh, morning devotees uh, he is a very important uh, deity of this village and of this entire area uh this is govind baba mandir so the priest has started praying to padma sambhava up here 
both he and uh, Mandarva go to Bichwe. See, Bichwe is, I think, a Tibetan mispronunciation of Halesha. They call it Halesha, this hillock up here. This hillock up here, uh, this is Bichwe, and uh, the place next to it is Sringarpur. See, Padma Sambhava then got a name, the lion's raw. The lion's raw. Shakya Singhe, the lion's raw. So that is Singarpur. Sing is lion, guard means the raw. Singarpur. So which way is Halesha? So they come here. Let's uh, do a close up of this hillock. They come here. And in a cave up here, they practice three months of longevity. Now the Tibetans say they went to Nepal and all. See, they made Padma Sambhava fly from Revalsar to that cave in Nepal. No, the whole, story, the whole story is in this area. So the cave is here. And I found a, a lotus, a polished lotus rock where uh, Padma Sambhava must have said, you, you see, he was the lotus born. So, this is, uh, what do you call it, your Bichwe is your Halesha, and uh, the cave is here. Check out the video of this hillock, folks, and the cave and the rock. No. Okay, now, folks, Dikhao. Uh, this is for my Tibetan friends and my Bhutanese friends. This is Dopenjo, this is for you. That is the village of Sahur. Your Zahor. That is the village of Sahur. Ah. 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 That was Sahur. That hillock, I suspect, is uh, Mount Halesha. Mount Halesha, where uh, Guru Rinpoche took the queen of Sahur, Zahor. And for three months, uh, he, they stayed in that cave. Uh, he stayed with Princess Mand Mandarva in that cave in Bichwe Pahari which you call Halesha, Mount Halesha, uh, and practiced uh, longevity. Now, see these hills up here. See these hills up here. These hills, these are the Ari Arawali range. Now, it is because of these hills, I think the Tibetan people mistake that this, these villages, were in Kashmir. See, because of these hills, the, it's written in the ancient text of Tibet. It is, these villages are in the base of hills. That is why people have mistaken it to be in the Swat Valley. That is why people have mistaken uh, Sahur, Uriana, Dhanakosha, and Halesha. Now, if he is, if he uh, marries a woman from Sahur, if uh, Guru Rinpoche marries a woman from Mount, uh, from Sahur, why should he uh, take her to a cave in Nepal when a cave is existent up here? Dekhabo. Mm -hmm. On this hillock, which is Bichwe uh, Pahari which I think your ancient name is Mount Halesha. So folks, the entire story of uh, Guru Rinpoche took a place in this area. Uriana, Uren village, Dhanakosha, Lake Dhanakosha is in Lake uh, Dhanauri. Zahor is a Tibetan uh, a mispronunciation of Sahur and that is Mount Halesha, where the two spent three months in a cave. The cave is there. It is a huge cave, 40 feet by 40 feet, folks. Thank you very much. Okay, folks.
folks. Now this is for Tibetans. Uh, according to your Buddhist text, Padma Sambhava and Mandarva uh, spent three months uh, in a cave in a hillock. Spent three months and did practiced longevity. After which they got rainbow body. So folks, look at that. That is the window of the cave. That is the window. They cry like. That is the window of the cave. I am going. I I I will show you the video of the cave. I entered inside and I videographed it. So basically, it is a chaitya. Abo. It is a chaitya. And it is double storied. You can see it's perfectly carved. You can see that the window is perfectly carved. It's in a curve. So, folks, uh, this is where I suspect Padma Sambhava and Mandarva. This is in Sahor, your Sahor, which we call Sahur up here. So, this is in Sahur, which you all call Sahor, and that is the cave. Thank you. Now, folks, I have entered the uh, cave, and see the wall is, you know, properly uh, carved, cut, and you know it's polished. And see the gra uh, gravel on the right, um, the right side of the screen is actually the ground. My uh, camera is in my hand, and you can uh, see uh, the picture at an angle. So the gravel on the right side of the screen is the ground. And see, uh, you can see a cave, the cave inside, in which uh, the Padma Sambhava and Mandarva practice three months of longevity. And uh, see the the right angle; it has been cut in right angle. And see the polish of the wall, and the polish of the wall. See, it's properly cut in straight lines, and. Uh, uh, the wall is polished and there is a rat hole with bricks below it. A rat hole with bricks below it. Uh, that means there is a room under this gravel. The gravel is, has hidden something below uh, uh, in uh, these brick, uh, brick rooms. I suspect it is termas. Now see this is the roof on the left hand side. This is the roof. You can see uh, bats coming out. Tibetans, you owe me free momos for to, uh, for entering this. Uh, uh, me and my staff, you owe us three free momos for entering this cave and videographing it. See, you see everything is cut at right angles. The roof is uh, to the left of the screen, and the wall. See, it is perfectly cut and polished. And uh, that means uh, someone important uh, used to stay here. And see, there is a passage leading away. Uh, the passage is leading away. And uh, see, the beautifully cut, polished uh, uh, rooms. So this is where Padma Sambhava and Mandarva uh, practice three months of longevity in Zahor. Uh, what you call Mount Halesha, this is in Bichwe. So, folks, enjoy the video of. Now, folks, we are halfway up. Your caves are over there, the windows are over there, the cave windows are over there. Now, look at this. See, this is polished rock for meditation. This is polished rock for meditation. And now, yeah. Now see this. See, this is a lotus, lotus flower on this polished rock. Now Padma Sambhava was the lotus born. I have seen a lot of places where rock has been polished for Buddhist meditation, but nowhere did I see a lotus flower. And Nazik uh, said, "Now look, look at this flower pot." The villagers who did not understand what this lotus meant, they added a flower pot up here. So this uh, it is uh, vandalizing this uh, 
ब्यूटीफुल लोटस स्कल्पचर ऑफ यर सो दिस इज आई सस्पेक्ट वे पद्म संभव सेट दिस इज वे पद्म संभव सेट एंड दिस इज वे मंडरवा विल हैव सेट दिस इज सी दे पुट ऑल डंग केक्स यर दिस इज वे मंडरवा विल हैव सेट एंड लुक एट दैट दैट इज वे द लोटस बोर्न सेट दैट मींस पद्म संभव और गुरु रिंपोचे so basically according to buddhist tibetan texts they practice the two practice longevity here for three months so folks this is your you can see there are more meditation spots abo there are more meditation meditation spots see this is for to sit and meditate so according to the tibetan scriptures wow tibetan scriptures uh uh what do you call it padma sambhava and mandarva uh, uh meditated here for three months so folks i think this is the spot where they used to sit for meditation theek hai okay now folks See, this is the ruins of another monastery on top of Bichwe Pahar, next to that cave and that lotus symbol. I just videographed. See, this is the ruins of the monastery on Bichwe Pahar, next to that cave. Uh, because i personally believe that this is connected to mandarva during the rainy season the buddhist gautam buddha and all the uh, what do you call it disciples would go to some uh, uh, on top of a hillock to escape the flood Monastery on top of Sringarpur to escape the floods, and now you can see Lali Pahari over there, where I showed you the possible place where Mandarva was incarcerated in a dungeon when uh, her father caught her red-handed with Padma Sambhava, and that is uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 a stupa you see over there that is i suspect it is padma sambhava it is huge because it has monasteries surrounding it on uh, what do you call it hillocks and you have the stupa in between so i suspect it has to be excavated i suspect it is padma sambhava it was in this cave up here uh, on this hillock in which way that to what you call it uh, they he at, they attained the rainbow body that is gobind baba he, he is prayed to as gobind baba rainbow body rainbow is circular and go bind gol bind is circular so this is gobind baba and uh, what you call it they attained the ra rainbow body and then padma sambhava had that desire to see his own country which was urgen or uren or oriana whatever you may mispronounce it so he and mandarva decide to visit urgen so they go to uren up here and uh, but and they they go uh, what do you call it uh, uh, disguised as beggars but they are uh, what do you call it uh, uh, people recognize them and they are caught and caught and once more there is an attempt to burn padma sambhava up here see uren is there they attempt to burn padma sambhava here this is jalappa sthan now jalappa sthan according to uh, tibetan uh, folklore this is an important uh, hindu temple 
Jalappa Sthan, according to folk law, is that, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, they, when they burnt uh, Padmasambhava and Mandarva, the water suddenly came out. Water suddenly came out. See, this is a hillock. Just next to the hillock is the temple with, uh, what do you call it, uh, your uh, Padmasambhava's uh, statue in it. There is a statue of Padmasambhava killing a child. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, see, there is a sort of gorge up here. And water passes through this. And uh, Tibetan, uh, what do you call it, uh, folklore says, water suddenly uh, came and uh, put out the flames. So Jalappa means exactly that. Jal means water. Appa means uh, Jalappa. Lappa means the uh, flames of, uh, of a fire. So Jalappa means the water and flames of a fire. This is where the water uh, put off the flames of a fire. So what do you call it? Uh, and here's the gorge where the water, the hillside seems to have split and uh, what do you call it? The water came out. Uh, that is according to Tibetan mythology. But this was a small, very thin gorge. The uh, Bihar government recently has uh, broadened it and made it into a canal. So folks, this is Jalappa Sthan where the people of Urgen or Uren or Oriana tried to burn the uh, Padma Sambhava, but water came and put off the fire. Check out the video. I am in Jalappa Sthan and see this is a statue of Padma Sambhava as the Shikhaband Raja, the Shikhaband Raja and this is the place in Urgen where the people of Urgen they tried to burn Padma Sambhava and Mandarva. See below the red cloth uh, this statue is unique, you see a child with a trishul aimed at its bottom. You see a child with a trishul aimed at its bottom. That is Padma Sambhava killing the child. So this is a very rare statue of Padma Sambhava killing the child below the red cloth. And uh, this is in uh, what do you call it Jalappa Sthan. It is a very important pilgrimage site of this area. People don't know the story. They just come here and pray to this statue. And uh, now I am telling them that it is it, uh, it is a statue of Padma Sambhava. And uh, you can see the child below the red cloth. And uh, basically uh, this is the place. What happened was Padma, Padma Sambhava and Mandarva went to Urgen or Uren or Oriana uh, to uh, see how the place was because that was his country. He was the king of that place. And the people, they went disguised as beggars because he had ba been banished from Urgen. So they uh, were they were recognized and then they were taken and burnt. This is the spot where water came and doused the flame. Jalappa Sthan. Jal means water and Lappa means flames. So this is the place where water doused the flames. Now folks, just now I am in Jalappa Sthan. This is the Pinda. This is the Pinda and I suspect this is the spot where they try to, the people of Uren or Oriana try to burn the uh, Padma Sambhava and Mandarva. Now see up here, they are all females. See this is a statue of a female sitting on fire it seems. See they are all females, females statue and very intricately carved, broken pieces. Intricately carved, broken pieces. See, this is, I think, a Buddha. This is a Buddha. This is 
a female statue fighting someone a female statue fighting someone see I think a statue of Mandarva. That also is a statue of Mandarva. This is a, a video of uh, what you call it uh, a votive stupa. A beautiful votive stupa. It's around four feet high. Uh, it has four corners with uh, four engravings of Padma Sambhava. It has four corners and four engravings of Padma Sambhava. Now, if you wa uh, s uh, stop the video and look at the cap, you will see the five petals, which is the trademark of Padma Sambhava. You will see the five petals, which is the trademark of Padma Sambhava in on all the eight carvings. See, the uh, votive stupa has got four sides with two uh, carvings of Padma Sambhava on each side. So they, are, they represent his eight manifestations. The eight manifestations of Padma Sambhava. The difference between the Tibetan paintings and these statues is that, uh, what do you call it, uh, Tibet is a very cold land, so you see Padma Sambhava very well covered with uh, a lot of uh, clothes you know, uh, and uh, hat and all but uh, and this is Bihar hot Bihar where it goes to the heat goes till 45 degrees centigrade so he is bare bodied in these statues so this is but the trademark is his moustache and his five petaled hat which you will see on all the eight engravings on all four sides and these are other statues this is in Ramsir village just next to Jalappa Sthan where the people of Urgain tried to burn Padma Sambhava. And uh, see the votive stupa, it is beautiful, uh, very well carved, very, it's a very good quality. After this incident in Jalappa Sthan, Padma Sambhava's, uh, see this is Padma Sambhava, I call it Padma Sambhava territory. Sansar, Pokhar, Lali Pahari, that is your Lotus Light uh, Palace, Fir your Sahar, and then your Dhan Lake, Dhan Kosha, your Urgain, your Mano, which was Mandarva's palace, and then Jalappa Sthan, where they tried to burn him. Now, Another addition is Shringi Rishi Dham. Shringi Rishi, actually Shringri Rishi Dham. See, uh, Padma Sambhava, when the Buddha Amitabh, he felt sorry for the sentient beings, the four letters H R I H fell like a Vajra. So the, this is Shringri Rishi Dham. And uh, uh, basically, according to Rigpa Wiki, according to Rigpa Wiki, Padma Sambhava uh, was taught by a, a sage called Singh Rishi. He was taught by a sage called Singh Rishi. Check out the video. See, this is Padma Sambhava, Rigpa Wiki. Let's check up the section on Zahor. In Zahor. See, this is very important. This is very important. The secret essence tantra he learned from Sri Singha. The secret essence tantra from he learned from Sri Singha. The teachers or teachings of Zong Cheng Po, Padma Sambhava would master a teaching the first time he encountered it. So, Sri Singha is mentioned 
that is your sing ri rishi so that is your jalapa sthan this is sring rishi dham uh, where uh, padma sambhava was tutored by uh, sri uh, singha sri singha so that is uh, uh, sring rishi and the local folklore is also that there was a sage called sring rishi up here so check out the video folks i am in sri rishi dham and see you can see the small pond there uh, with the hillside behind it and that uh, temple to the left uh, the it is a straight cliff up and uh, water flows from uh, inside the cliff now padma sambhava got some of his education from the sage called sing rishi according to tibetan text padma sambhava got some of his education called sing rishi so this is sing ri rishi uh, and uh, see this temple here there was a statue just like the statue you just saw see the cliff side this is the cliff side and in one uh, account of padma sambhava i read that water came out of the uh, the cliff opened and water came out so this could be uh, this could most probably be uh, a site but uh, basically i think it is jalapa sthan and uh, anyway uh, this is another possible site but this is the place uh, which uh, where singh rishi lived uh, from whom padma sambhava took some of his education from and uh, uh, this is a very important place because uh, people come here to uh, shave their heads people come here to shave their heads it's called mundan and you must remember the buddhists were the ones who had shaved heads and uh, the buddhists were the ones who had shaved heads see uh, the padma sambhava's folklore is the rock side opened and water flowed out from inside the rocks so you can see the water flowing out from inside the rocks and it goes into this man recently made pond where these people are enjoying a nice bath it is a very beautiful picnic spot and uh, people come here to enjoy picnic there was a statue just like the one in jalapa sthan where padma sambhava is seen killing uh, a young padma sambhava is seen killing a child with a, a trishul so what do you call it uh, he was the shikhaband raja and uh, that statue was stolen recently and it was replaced by a durga statue anyway this is the place where people come here to shave their heads remember the buddhists used to shave their heads So folks this is Singri Rishi Dham this is an engraving of the temple i just showed you it's defaced uh, in Singri Rishi Dham and uh, uh, there is an engraving of Padma Sambhava with his seven uh, consort see here this is Padma Sambhava with his seven consorts you count the females there are seven of them and Padma Sambhava with his trademark mustache see he is the only uh, person who has a mustache in india i am concluding my uh, video up here see you this is i call this padma sambhava territory padma sambhava territory and uh, basically you have all the spots you have uden urgen lake hankosha mano the palace of mandarva sahor uh, and uh, your lali pahadi which is the lotus light palace and your sansar pokhar where yeah, he got freedom from samsara this is padma sambhava store uh, territory folks enjoy the video I I hope you all like my, my video 
and uh, you all appreciated it. It is uh, exactly, a it is a scientific uh, study. I have read all ancient uh, Buddhist uh, uh, historians who had come here, the Tibetan historians, and they went back and wrote about Bihar. So basically, uh, this is uh, scientific research on Padma Sambhava. I hope you enjoyed it and appreciate it. If you, uh, if you liked it, please press the like button and sh uh, please share and, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Buddha Exhumed. And press the bell icon button below the video so that you are updated with my new videos. So folks, please uh, like this video and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon uh, button below this video. Thank you. For further queries, you can contact Padma Sambhava Tours and Travels below Sangam Banquet Hall and Hotel, the below V Bazaar, Purani Bazaar, Lakhi Sai, Bihar. Contact. Uh, this is the mobile number. This is my mobile 7004814370. So my contact number is uh, 7004814370. It will be the official contact number of Padma Sambhava Tour and Travels. Basically, I will be the guide because uh, in, no one in my town uh, knows this story. So I will have to personally take people around. So this is it. Padma Sambhava Tours and Travels. I have opened it. And this is the mobile number and this is the address. Below Sangam Banquet Hall and Hotel. B Bazaar, Purani Bazaar, Lakhi Sai, Bihar, uh, 7004814370. Okay, folks, this is my town on the banks of Kul River. That is your Zangdok Palri and that is uh, Bichwe Pahar, that side uh, where Padma Sambhava and all did uh, three months of longevity, and that is your. Zangdok Palri folks, that is your Zangdok Palri and uh, uh, basically this is my hotel, some Sangam Banquet and, uh, and hotel, uh, what do you call it, uh, I will be uh, adding Tashi Delek, so uh, this is Sangam Banquet and hotel, Banquet Hall and hotel above V Bazaar and uh, my tour and travel company I have opened in the basement up here uh, below V Bazaar uh, Padma Sambhava Tours and Travels for all uh, 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 followers of the Nigma sect who want to visit all the places shown in this video uh, the what do you call it uh, uh, Padma Sambhava Tours and Travels is in this uh, uh, basement Below Sangam Banquet uh, Hall and Hotel, V Bazaar. V Bazaar is the mall. V Bazaar is the mall and uh, the, what do you call it? Uh, Padma Sambhava Tours and Travels is uh, in the basement here. So, whoever from Leh, Ladakh, Sikkim, Kathmandu, Nepal, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Bhutan, and uh, your Tibet. Whoever wants to visit the spots of Padma Sambhava and see the temples dedicated to him up here, uh, uh, visit uh, this uh, Padma Sambhava tours and travels. I will be putting up the board here below Sangam Banquet Hotel, and, uh, Banquet Hall, and Hotel up, uh, above the Bazaar and below in the basement. Thank you. Uh, I will show you the hotel. It's a comfortable hotel for people who want to stay here and uh, for meditation. And you can every morning and evening you can view Zangdo Palri, uh, Bal Gudar, uh, Ishwar Pahari, Sahar, Sansar Poker from your window post. 
and uh, pray to them before you go to sleep and pray to them after you get up in the morning. We are going towards the foyer of the hotel. Ah. And this is the counter. And I just say you camera the khadi. This is the foyer. And this is a small office for my son to sit in. He still doesn't believe that Tibetans will come here and uh, visit the place. And these are the rooms uh, for you. And my staff is showing us around. Uh, see, this is the room. Uh, uh, lights on, kitchen sub sub. These other spacious, luxurious, del uh, deluxe rooms. Uh, my son has well made it. You can stay here. When you folks come, I can. I'm willing to give a discount also for Tibetans. Uh, this is the bathroom. Your shower, uh, commode, and the basin. It's all here. And here's your window view of Rakhuliega. This is a view in the distance you can see Balgudar. In the distance you can see Balgudar. And These are the other rooms and this is another section of the hotel. See these are halls for ma uh, marriages and meetings and uh, 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 what do you call it if you want for meditation also. For meditation I will give it, uh, I can give it for free. Uh, if you come and stay in this hotel you can sit in this hall and uh, meditate, it's lovely. Have a very peaceful feeling. The ambience is good, and you have a second hall. This is also for marriages and meetings, and uh, if you want for meditation too. And uh, if uh, the hall is free, I can uh, allow people to sit here and meditate at no cost at all. That is, I'll have to discuss it with my son, and I will put this proposal to him. And I ah. And see, there is a, a balcony here. This hall. Ah. There is a balcony here. Ah. It's a lovely view. Of the river, your Zangro Pari that side, and your Bichwe Pari that side, and uh, Padma Sambhava Stupa is also over there. So you can uh, sit and meditate uh, uh, viewing Padma Sambhava Stupa. So this is uh, a, a lovely view. You can sit here and enjoy the riverside. While you stay in Lucky Sarai. Thank you. Okay, folks, now I am on the roof of the hotel. Now, the plus point of this hotel is its position in Lucky Sarai. See, just before me is Bichwe Pahari, where Padma Sambhava and Mandarva packed, uh, practiced three months of longevity and they got the rainbow body. Rainbow is curved, that is Gol, Golbin, that is Gobind Baba of Rampur, the temple you all saw in this video. So, this is Bichwe Pahari, where that cave I showed you, where they practice three months of long viti. Just behind it is Sahor, and behind Sahor is Lake Dhan Kosha, a Dhanari, and behind Dhanari is what do you call it? Urgen or Uren, which I showed you. And there, 
just behind the railway bridge that hillock is your jainagar pahari or what the tibetans call zangdok palri with the cop that is the copper colored mountain and the black mountain and uh, what do you call it uh, the lotus light temp- uh, palace of padma sambhava on it that is uh, lali pahari or lali mahal and just that side see that hi- small hillock there that is what i think is padma sambhava's uh, what do you call it relic stupa which uh, uh, you can see uh, uh, which is right in front of lali pahari or the lotus light palace which i showed you so that is uh, padma sambhava's uh, relic stupa so you can every night and every morning night time before you go to sleep you can come to the roof up here borrow mattresses from the hotel and uh, meditate before you go to sleep and uh, what do you call it uh, meditate to all these sites you have visited before you go to sleep and this is the south part see in the distance you have uh, this uh, excuse this mosque shouting away what do you call it they have their daily azan uh, that is bal gudar your bal garur where padma sambhava flew out of the ganges like a vulture uh, he was a child and he flew out like a uh, ganges uh, like a vulture and he got the name a uh, child like a vulture that is bal gudar bal garur and in the distance there are uh, the in is the indradeshwar temple where the fight took place between the king and padma sambhava the king who was destroying buddhist statues and just behind here just behind here is a uh, sansar pokhar sansar pokhar where uh, padma sambhava and mandarva were freed from samsara folks just behind the railway line there so when you go to sleep in the nights you can come to the roof here borrow a mattress from the hotel and meditate and then go to meditate uh, what do you call it facing all these spots and early in the morning you can come to the roof take the mattresses and once more meditate uh what do you call it uh, uh facing zangdok palri bichwe pahari uh sansar pokhar <coughs> where they were freed from samsara and your what do you call it uh uh balgudar so folks i uh, welcome you to lucky sarai you can stay in my hotel and what do you call it enjoy the stay here folks so this is lucky sarai town for you it's waiting for you tibet ladakh le uh kathmandu nepal all the ningmas uh bhutan arunachal pradesh lucky sarai is waiting for you Padma Sambhava is waiting for you my hotel is waiting for you and uh what do you call it let's hope uh, Padma Sambhava causes uh the this covid problem to subside so that you all can visit this town thank you